Hi YouTube, I finally managed to get around to sculpting a Yoda. He's been high up on my to-do list for a really long time, but I never felt that I would do him any justice. I think I've finally managed to pull it off, so I'm going to show you all the steps of this one by one. The first step was just to create this overall armature. So this is made out of aluminium wire, just twisted around itself. This is 2mm thick aluminium wire, but it's really easy to bend and twist. So you can see here like with the toes, I've just bent it over itself just to create these sort of loops. Um, and then the toes can actually be bent upwards in the middle as well. Um, it's obviously the same with the fingers. And then for the head, I've just used aluminium foil and I've just like rolled it into a ball. You can see I left those couple of spikes of wire there, made a couple of holes in the bottom of this ball and I can just slot this on. Um, I've also put this um, bamboo skewer through his head. Next I covered most of the armature with aluminium foil and I've really kind of squashed this so it's really nice and crumpled up, makes it nice and solid. I've made a sort of hump for his back, uh, just getting the basic shape in. For the actual sculpting of my Yoda I'm going to be using Milliput. If you haven't used Milliput before, it's a two part putty, you mix the two parts together and it sets rock hard in about four hours. What's really great about this is that obviously when you first mix it, it starts off quite soft and then gradually over the four hours it hardens. So it means you can use different tools at different times to get different effects. I decided to start with the feet on this one uh, and I just basically just put milliput over the whole lot just to kind of coat it initially. Then I added extra lumps and bumps uh, on the tops of the toes and that sort of thing and on the edges of the toes. And then right at the end, I've put those little tendons on the sides as well. That makes quite a difference. And then right at the end, I've just used a bit of plastic sheeting and I've just pressed through that, all these little wrinkles, just using um, the edge of like a scalpel blade, um, a blunt scalpel blade. Then I've also pushed into form the kind of toenails at the front. The hands are done in basically the same way where you just coat them with a layer of milliput and then you're just uh, pressing through a plastic sheet with a blunt scalpel blade just to create all the wrinkles on them. You can also use a scalpel blade to press up into the fingernail edges to create the claws. Next I used a thin layer of milliput to create his neck and all the neck folds. I've pressed a lot of wrinkles into these again through a plastic sheet. You can see you get pretty good at wrinkles pretty quickly. You just got to get them to kind of follow contours of um, different areas that you're doing. I've also done two balls of milliput here and stuck them in with super glue. Next I did his nose and his eyebrow ridge and his actual eyelids. And you can see on this I've pressed through again to create ridges everywhere, little wrinkles. Again, exactly the same technique using a plastic sheet and a blunt scalpel blade. The mouth is done by making a dome of milliput and just smoothing in the edges. Then you can use a scalpel blade to cut in and form the actual hole in the mouth. I did domes of milliput for the cheeks and basically anywhere where you've got a bump you just add a dome of milliput, smooth it in and then you can add all your wrinkles over the top. I did another sort of uh, bump for his chin and any kind of jowls that sort of thing and then I put on his lower eyelids. Okay, I just put the ears on roughly to start with. They're much too thick, but I'll go back and refine that with a Dremel drill with a sanding wheel on it. Um, I've also added a big dome of milliput over the top of his head, and then I've just pressed the main ridges into that. There are two thin bumps at the top of the head that you'll see, and those are just made by rolling two thin sausages of milliput, putting them on the top, and then just smoothing them in at the edges. Next I created these garments that go underneath his main robe and for this you just do very thin sheets of milliput. I actually roll them out onto some aluminium foil and then you press into the thin sheets just using, um, in this case it was one of those bags that you get from the supermarkets that looks a little bit sort of like thin hessian. And I press that into it and that gives you this really nice kind of material texture. Then you can just fold your thin sheets into these kind of rolls of fabric. For his main robe I added a bit of artistic license with some of the folds and things. I also added like a little loincloth thing at the front with a little rope on it because I thought that would add a bit of extra texture to him and just make him look a little bit nicer overall. 
When I was a kid I used to collect all the Kenner Star Wars figures and the little tiny Yoda was always my favourite. I used to carry him to school with me quite a lot of the time. Um, also, Return of the Jedi was the first ever movie that I saw at the cinema, so Yoda holds a very kind of special place in my heart. Okay, he looks a bit strange in this position without having his um, walking stick to lean on. So, next stage is to make that. So, this is just some aluminium wire twisted around itself just to get the rough overall shape. I've made it too long at this stage so that I can trim it down later if I need to. I made this base for him out of an old leg from a pine chest of drawers. Um, I've also gone in and I've refined the shape of the ears a little bit. I just used a Dremel with a sanding wheel just to kind of smooth them down a little bit and just thin them down because they were way too thick before. Um, I've also gone in and I've put this rope around his neck. He's got like a little ornament thing that he wears. I couldn't make the actual ornament because there would be no place to put it. It would actually be hidden underneath his robes. But just putting the little bit of rope on gives it a bit of texture. Here's the walking stick. I've just gone over that with mini part and just put a lot of wood textures into it. On the base here I've done a very thin layer of milliput and just textured into that. And I think overall now he's looking really good. He's got like a lot more kind of textures and things added to him. And at this point I can't wait to paint him. I think he's going to look really nice as a kind of finished painted thing. Yeah he's definitely one I really wanted to try and do justice to. And I'm hoping at this stage that it's starting to kind of come together. If I was going to leave him as an unpainted sculpture, this grey green colour of the mini putt would actually be a really ideal Yoda colour to use. But um, normally when I paint these sculptures it brings out all the detail and things even more. So at this point I am really looking forward to just getting some paint on and really bringing out those details that I've sculpted into him. Okay, I'd just like to thank Milliput for sponsoring this channel. Like I say, if you haven't tried Milliput before, go out and get yourself a pack and give it a go. I think you'll love it as much as I do. Right, don't let this first stage of my painting scare you because this is all the darkest colours added. So I've added this really darkish green for his face and his hands and his feet. And I've done a really quite dark grey colour for his cloak and a dark brown colour for his undergarments and his stick uh, and the texture on the ground here. So at the moment, yeah, he's looking very dark, but don't worry about that at all. Remember, this is just all the kind of deepest areas. This is what's represented here. Then all of the highlights go on top of this to bring out all the details. So you can see the difference between what I showed you a second ago and this with all of the highlights added to it really brings out all of those details. So this was all done with dry brush. If you haven't done dry brush before, it's basically getting some paint on your brush, rubbing most of the paint off so that your brush is almost dry. Just rub it on a bit of kitchen paper. And then what you do is you just rub it over all of those top surfaces. And it just makes all of those little high bits show up and all of the deeper areas remain dark. I noticed a cool optical illusion effect that happens with his eyes if you tilt it. Makes it look like he's staring at you. It's like... <laughs> mm, yes, Yoda I am. <laughs> Subscribe to this channel, you should. <laughs> I mean, he's right. You should probably subscribe to this channel. Um, incidentally, I did his hair as well. So the hair is just done with an old dog toy. Um, that I bought from a car boot sale a long time ago. It's just this white shaggy dog. I think it cost me a pound or something. Um, but I've been using it a lot. Uh, I used it on my gremlin to do like his sort of Mohican. Um, and I've used it on, you know, Harry the Bigfoot. I did his uh, beard and everything with this same, <laughs> it's all with the same fur. So that one dog toy, although I wrecked a very nice toy dog, it's uh, it served its purpose well. I'll just show you a few close-ups just so you can see the effects of the dry brushing. This is worth remembering, like if you're doing some sculpts and you're putting all of the details into the sculpts and it's taking you quite a long time to build up those details, then at the end if you decide to paint everything just in flat colours, 
it's going to kill those effects straight away. So it's really worth practicing dry brushing if you haven't learned to do it already because it makes such a difference to your sculpts. I mean, the fabric on this is starting to look like fabric, but it's only because of that dry brush light effect on the top of the fabric. Otherwise, it would all just look pretty flat. Um, same with the moss on the base and the same with all of his little wrinkles. None of those would show up very well if it was all painted just in one flat colour. OK, check out my other videos to see other sculpts that I've done of other weird movie creatures and movie characters. Um, hit subscribe to see anything I post in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Mmm, yes, mmm, catch you in the next video, I will. <laughs> That's a catch you in the next video. <laughs>